Hello again. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to edit the event log using the Excel template. So, let's get started. In the interest of time, I went ahead and made a project ahead of time. And um, under the Data History tab, you'll find your event log. And in the upper right hand corner, you'll find an Excel icon. You can just click on it. And uh, what I like to do first thing is save a copy of it to my project file. If you watched my videos in the past, you see I like to create a project file first thing. So we'll do save as. And you can see I've got a bunch here that I've already been playing with, but uh, I'll just replace this one. And in this document, there are two examples already created. They've got a word alarm and a bit alarm. So I'm going to go over the headers real quick on these. The first column is category. And as you may already know, uh, categories are from 0 to 255. Uh, priority level. And um, they've got some built-in pull-down tabs in this example, so you can select priority level. Address type, of course, bitter word. You've got your PLC name. Now, that can either be a local HMI registers or one of your driver device registers. So you need to make sure that you either copy out of your driver dialog and paste in there or make sure you type it correctly, PLC name, or you'll get a fault when you uh, go to import it. Also, if you've changed the name of your local HMI, you need to make sure that the text matches and it is case sensitive. Uh, you've got a drop down list here for whether or not it's a system tag or whether or not it's a user defined tag and it could be both. Here we've got the data address. Um, if you're familiar with uh, with our internal registers, uh, we utilize something called uh, index registers. So there actually are um, up to 32 extra registers for each address. If you're interested in that, you need to look it up in the manual uh, about our index registers and figure all that out. Uh, you've got your data format. This is also in a pull down. Uh, this enable for the notification address and the uh, condition that you want the address to be set to, true or false, the notification bit. And then of course you've got the PLC name for the notification bit and the register type whether or not it's a system or user defined tag. And of course the address and index register, just like the actual event register. Then uh, over here in the blue is the trigger condition of the event address. If it were a word, of course, they've got all the uh, different conditions that it could be greater and less than, equal to, not equal to, equal or greater, so on and so forth. And then on the bit conditions, of course they have off and on. And there should be some more conditions. Yeah, here we go. We've got off, on, 
and from off to on or from on to off. Uh, this next column here under T, that kind of helps you remember it, is the tolerance. Um, usually everyone just sets that to zero. Then of course here is your alarm. It says content, but that would be your message, your alarm message. Over here, whether it's a, a label, Over here would be the label name. Here you can even define the font and the color. This write value, that is the acknowledge value, the actual value that is written to your acknowledge register if you choose to define one. You can enable or disable sound. And then, of course, this is your sound library file name. And this is the item index. So you can actually shuffle these around uh, with that index. So uh, the way I like to go about editing this is if I'm going to do all my word alarms first, I uh, just sort of guess how many. In this situation, we're going to do five. So I'm going to copy my bit example. And I'm going to put it down here out of the way. And then I'm going to copy my word example again. And I'm going to paste these in here. Uh, so I'm just going to leave the category zero on all of these and the priority is good enough for me. And by the way, if I were going to uh, be using a driver address, I would have edited all that to start with in the original. Yeah, I probably should have changed all these first. And I'm gonna turn off the watch address. I mean the notification address. And I'm gonna make these if they're greater than 100. Copy that. And I'm not going to edit any of the color or anything, but I think I need to make these increment. It may automatically do it when it imports. I'm not sure. All right, now down here to my words, I mean my uh, bit alarm. And I'll just edit this real quick. So now I want to go ahead and save this and uh, I can actually close it. So now we want to go down here to uh, import and find our file. I think it was this one. Success. Yep. There they all are. Oh, you know what? Hey, you know what I see I did? I left all of these alarm one. 
in our message so I need to go ahead and uh, edit that see these are all fixed now so that's just a quick way it's a lot quicker than uh, going in here and doing them one at a time you know going through all of this so um, it's as easy as that let's go ahead and uh, and uh, run our project and give it a try So as you remember, the condition was off on all of those bid alarms. So as I toggle them on, seven, eight, nine. And of course you can see all of our statistics everything shows. So let's test our uh, word alarms. Uh, it might have been 300. Yeah. So there you go. It's as simple as that. Thanks for watching and be sure to come back and see more of our instructional videos.